Hey, what's going on, y'all? Uh, Corey Chapman here, and welcome to episode seven of my show called Loving the Covenant. This is the show where we talk about politics from a biblical worldview, proclaim the gospel, and proclaim Christ's kingship over all of reality. <clears throat> Uh, a lot of political stuff to talk about today. Going to talk about Joe Biden's executive orders, uh, abortion, something his press secretary said recently, uh, something he said about the pandemic, pandemic, um, masks, uh, someone who's facing a pretty severe punishment just for posting memes, uh, GameStop and Robin Hood, stock market stuff, AOC and Ted Cruz. And we're going to talk about it all again from a biblical worldview. So without a further ado, let's get right into it. I'm going to start out with this CNN article talking about uh, Biden signing a memorandum reversing Trump re uh, abortion access restrictions. So here's what it says, at least the beginning. President Joe Biden signed a presidential memorandum on Thursday to reverse restrictions on abortion access uh, domestically and abroad imposed and expanded by the Trump administration. The memorandum will reverse... Uh, my predecessor's attack on women's health access, Biden told reporters during a signing ceremony in the Oval Office. So, right here, we have uh, one of, gosh, one of Joe Biden's very terrible decisions. Uh, and this is going to result in the death of lots and lots of babies. Um, 62 million babies have been murdered since Roe v. Wade in 1973. It, like 62 million babies. That's a lot of babies. Uh, Leviticus chapter 20 condemns murdering children. So does Exodus 21 and the Ten Commandments. Um, I mean, we see things like this over and over again in Scripture. Uh, Christians who, or people who call themselves Christians who voted for this guy, shame on you, because uh, this is going to result in a lot of uh, slaughter of children who have done nothing wrong. Um, now Trump wasn't perfect on this issue at all. You know, he, he wasn't consistently pro-life. I don't think he was pro-life at all. He definitely wasn't trying to abolish abortion, but less babies did die under Trump. So I mean, way more are going to die under Biden. Biden and Kamala Harris are insanely pro-abortion. They love, uh, killing babies. They love the death of children. So that's just a little bit on that. And, you know, speaking of, uh, you know, Biden signing things in the Oval Office, he has something like 42 executive signatures now. I mean, he has so many uh, executive orders, executive signatures. He's not even really obeying them. We talked about the mask thing last week. Um, you know, the whole rules for thee and uh, not for me thing. And it, it, it's it's just... it. it you know, I was going to say it's unbelievable, but it's really not unbelievable. And all these executive orders and executive signatures, uh, he's doing all this. And, you know, but, you know, Trump was the fascist, right? You know, conservatives are the fascists, and he's the one acting like a dictator. So it, it's just so unbelievably inconsistent. But I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this and open up something different. Um, let's, let's talk about... Uh, Biden's uh, press secretary, and she was asked something about abortion. Let's let's get right into that. Gonna go ahead and maximize this right now, and we'll take a listen together. Put all the way in the back. Yeah, hi. Uh, congratulations on your new position. Uh, Owen Johnson with EWTN Global Catholic Network. Two big concerns for pro-life Americans. Oh, hold on. The audio is not coming through. Uh, so let's go ahead and try to find find that. Which, of course, uh, keeps okay. taxpayer dollars. As you know, oh, no, we got it. Abortions, Medicaid abortions. I'm going to start and that Mexico over. Mexico City policy, which under the previous administration they expanded. Catholic Network. To WTN Global Catholic Network. New position. Uh, on your new position. Yeah, hi, uh, congratulations on your new position. Here we go. Uh, Owen Jensen with EWTN Global Catholic Network. Two big concerns for pro-life Americans. The Hyde Amendment, which of course uh, 
keeps taxpayer dollars, as you know, from paying for abortions, Medicaid abortions, and the Mexico City policy, which under the previous so he's asking about abortion. So you keep tax dollars from overseas paying for abortions. So what are President, what is President Biden planning on doing on those two items right now? And here's her answer. Uh, well, I think we'll have more to say on the Mexico City policy in the coming days. Um, uh, but I will just take the opportunity to remind all of you that he is a devout Catholic and somebody who yeah, attends okay. church regularly. Uh, he started his day attending church with his family this morning. Um, but I don't have anything more. Okay. All right, and I, I pulled that from Matt Walsh's show. You shall, y'all should go check him out. And Michael Knowles. I'm going to play something from him as well. Uh, let's go ahead and exit out of that. All right, so I'm, I'm going to. Well, now I'll, I'll put the clip back. And just backtrack a little bit. Here. All right, so. Biden's press secretary asked, you know, by this individual that's there <clears throat> about, you know, abortions and abortions overseas and things like that. So it, it it's it's not unbelievable, but it's it's totally evil. Biden wants to fund abortions here and overseas with our tax dollars. So killing babies at the expense of our paychecks by force. We don't get a choice. We don't get to opt out of it. Taking our money to slaughter children. And also, you know, the question is is asked out of concern in the context of Catholicism. Um, and she's like, oh, you know, Biden goes to church and he is a devout Roman Catholic. No, he's not. He's okay with the murder of children. Now, <clears throat> I am a Protestant. I'm not a Roman Catholic because the Roman Catholic Church teaches false doctrine and a false gospel. But to say that Joe Biden is a devout Roman Catholic is absolutely absurd. Just because he walked into a Catholic church doesn't make him Catholic. And, you know, being so uh, radically for abortion, so loving the murder of children, loving ripping babies limb from limb in the in the womb uh no he is not he is not a roman catholic uh at all so let's go ahead and exit out of this and i'm going to play another clip about uh biden on the so-called pandemic so let's go ahead and get out of this open up this link that I have right here. Give me just one second. I'm going to open it up. And get right into it. Let's play the clip. Interact. Okay. So here's Joe Biden talking about the quote-unquote coronavirus or COVID-19 pandemic. What does he have to say? Uh, I think it's very interesting. So let's take a listen. If we fail to act, there will be a wave of evictions and foreclosures in the coming months on, as this pandemic rages on, because there's nothing we can do to change the trajectory of the pandemic in the next several months. All right. Um, so that's something, that's something that's very interesting to note. That's very interesting to note, because uh, he just said there's nothing we can do to change the trajectory of the pandemic within the next several months. So my question is, if we can't change the, tra the, the trajectory of the pandemic, we can't do anything about it, why the mask mandates, why the lockdowns all this time? Why? Why? I don't get it. Um, it's, uh, this is very inconsistent. Conservatives have been saying this for months. Some of us have been saying it the entire time. And, um, all the, uh, it, it, it's just, it's, it's just crazy and insane. But speaking about this, you know, there's the whole thing now where Fauci, Dr. Fauci, well, you know, actually, I don't, I don't even want to call him a doctor. Fauci is, uh, at first he was saying, don't wear a mask, it's stupid. Then he was saying, 
wear a mask and now he's saying well masks aren't really that effective so we need to wear two masks and then you have people talking about three masks J just wear 87 masks right masks don't work i've talked about that on the show i recommend uh yeah, dr jason lyle he, he has some videos about this over at the biblical institute of creation they don't work um so that's that's just one thing um yeah so that's that's this is absolutely insane i mean democrats have been trying to lock the country down for for months uh you know, the whole two weeks to flatten the curve it's it's been it's it's been like 10 months you know it's almost february it this is so asinine and it's so ridiculously stupid just let people be free let people be free let people be free to not wear masks let them be able to opt out and stop restricting everybody's lives okay but that, that's just a little bit on all of that stuff that i wanted to get to uh, play some clips talk about it um it, it's it's not biblical to lock people down by the way and force them to wear masks you know I, my, my appeal would be uh you know leviticus 13 uh, if someone's sick they quarantine everybody else gets to live their life as normal as free people nothing about masks nothing about lockdowns it, it's just it's just that simple constitutionally you know the first amendment we have the right to assemble and uh, we absolutely have the right to go to church um you now right to assembly includes church your own home public places your own business going to work all right so that's that's enough on that particular subject. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about a couple other things. So r real briefly, I want to touch on something that I learned listening to the Daily Wire. There's this individual named, I think his name's Douglas Mackey, who is facing 10 years in prison, a very severe crime. What did he do? Did he murder someone? Did he rape someone? No, no. Posting memes. He posted a meme or was you know, posting memes about, it, it was a joke, you know, basically saying, text this number to vote for Hillary Clinton, and obviously you can't text in votes. So it was a joke, people went through with it, and obviously this, this wasn't a vote for Hillary Clinton, and uh, he's facing 10 years in prison for something like this. That's not okay. Lock this human being in a cage for 10 years for posting memes. Forget about free speech, forget about your constitutional rights, forget about being biblical and you know loving your neighbor and all that stuff. Just lock them up because posting memes is evil. That's absolutely absurd. Just wanted to touch on that real quick. Um, I wanna play a clip about GameStop and the whole thing that's going on with that in the stock market and robin hood um i have a clip from michael knowles over at the daily wire and i'm going to play that right now uh i think what is going on is absolutely hilarious uh you know these guys on reddit um doing this and uh let's play the clip interact here we go what happened yesterday is a, a bunch of people on Reddit gathered together. They saw that a big hedge fund had a massive short position on GameStop, which is not a valuable company in and of itself, but the, the institutional investor had this short position, meaning they were betting against the stock. So all these Reddit guys went in and put their money on GameStop, Game, GameStop rather, GameStop stock. <laughs> GameStop. And that drove the price up. As the price went up, the people with the short positions have to shell out more and more money. And the, the premise of these Redditors is they were willing to remain completely insane longer than the financial institutions could remain solvent, and this would result in them making a bunch of money. Okay, that's just a, that's just a little bit 
of what is going on with the whole uh, Reddit guys and stock market and GameStop and driving up the uh, stocks and everything. I just wanted to touch on that real briefly. Okay, and now something that's very interesting to note, I think, is you have Robin Hood now who stopped people. I believe they stopped people from uh, buying shares, you know, through their app, through their services. You know, this company, Robin Hood, the stock, well, the stock broker, stopped, stopped people from being able to trade. It's funny, they have a post uh, saying, let people trade. And they stop people from trading, which is really inconsistent. You should just let the free market be the free market, uh, and they're not doing that. You know, they claim to be for that before, and they're clearly not. Right? And capitalism is a biblical thing. Like the idea that the government shouldn't take your money and your businesses is a biblical thing, um, and that's painfully obvious. It's not Christian to steal from people. It's it's not Christian to take someone's freedom away at all in any way whatsoever. Um, but that's, you know, I, some of that stuff was over my head. I had to uh, have conversations and listen to a lot of Daily Wire and read up uh, to understand what's going on here. But here's, all this is just some you know, political stuff going on right now. And it's funny, you know, the, the people, it's, some people are calling the Reddit guys, you know, Trump supporters and, and, and racists and all that stuff. And that's absolutely stupid. And, um, you know, it's bad when they do it, when regular people, you know, screw other people over via the stock market. That's totally okay. But when the guys over at Wall Street do it, you know, when, when they bet against a business or when when they screw people over, it's totally fine. It's inconsistent. Um so, I mean, that's that's really the bulk of uh, today's show. I'm going to end with something that I haven't done on this show yet. And I'm just going to pull this back up here. Uh, since I had it on here at the beginning, let's interact with it. Sc scroll. Well, no, I'll, I'll leave it right here. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> So I just wanted to end with saying, I am a Christian. I, I, I believe in Jesus Christ. Um, I believe he is king. I believe his kingdom is here. So I, I wanted to end the show with a gospel proclamation. So every single human being that has ever existed, excluding Christ, has sinned, broken the Ten Commandments. You and I and everybody else have are, are guilty of this, right? Lying stealing, committing idolatry, um, lusting, hating others, being murderous and adulterous at heart, coveting, uh, Sabbath breakers, um, you know, disobedient to parents, all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> We're guilty of this. Now, if a criminal breaks the law, right, and he's in a courtroom he is going to be judged for breaking the law and he's going to be punished, either with jail time or the death penalty or a fine or something. Because um, they're guilty. Now, in the same way, sinners break God's law and are therefore criminals against God. They have the sin is transgression of God's law, the Ten Commandments. And God is the judge of the universe. Um, and God sends people, will send people to hell for being sinners, for, for being sinful. <clears throat> and it's a just punishment. So, um, it, it, you know, it's, it's like a court case scenario. But if someone pays the fine or bails out the criminal, then that criminal can go free. Well, Jesus, Jesus Christ, the one who is truly God and truly man, the second person of the Trinity, the Messiah, lived a perfect sinless life, died on the cross and rose from the dead. He lived a sinless life to give righteousness to unrighteous people. He died on the cross to give atonement and forgiveness to uh, sinners. And he rose from the dead to give eternal life to people who are dead in their sin. 
when Christ died on the cross, he was essentially paying the debt uh, to God for the sins of God's people. He paid the fine. He bails us out of God's wrath, right? He takes the penalty uh, for our sins for us. You know, it's like if, if, if you were on death row and someone took the death penalty for you, someone got the lethal injection in your place even though you should have went there. That's like what Christ did. Um, so, yeah. Um, but to be saved, to, to, to be saved by Christ, to be bailed out of God's wrath, to be changed and be a lover of God and a lover of Christ and no longer an enemy of God or an enemy of Christ. You must repent and believe in Christ. That means you must turn away from your sins and you must place all of your faith and hope and trust alone in Jesus alone for your salvation. Not in your works, not in anyone or anything else. Just Christ. He alone is Savior. Only he can save you. Christ is also King. Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he has all authority. Uh, he is king of all creation. And he uh, has brought his kingdom to the earth. It's here now. And it will be victorious. It already is victorious. Christ will have this world. Um, Jesus Christ is king. <clears throat> so I just wanted to say all of that and my show proclaiming uh, that Christ is Savior uh, Christ saves and Christ is king. Um, governments have the responsibility to obey Christ and serve God. This is according to Romans 13 and Psalm chapter 2. Um, so I'm a theonomist. I believe in God's law. I think it should be the law of the land. And I think uh, that if you don't have God's law, then you don't have any objective basis for ruling a country or anything because um, you're just making them up at that point. So that's it for me. That's the show today. Feel free to like, subscribe, and share. You know, you can share my content or post clips of my content anywhere. I give everyone complete permission to do that. Uh, stay tuned for more content on YouTube and more content on TikTok. I, I have new things coming to both platforms. I'm also going to uh, start posting things on Gab, and I think I'm going to continue on Rumble. Um, and I want to start doing these live. I want to I want to start live streaming these and posting clips of you know li live streams of the show and recorded episodes of the show throughout the week and on TikTok and things like that. Um, but that's it for me. Just wanted to say all that and announce those things. Peace out, y'all. Have a good day.